land warrior. High tech, high priced, high profile, netro fucking centric land warrior. To see what was in front of our face was bad enough, but spy bird uplinks were also showing how truly large the horde was. We might be facing thousands, but behind them were millions. Remember, we were taking on the bulk of New York City's infestation. This was only the head of one really long undead snake stretching all the way back to Times fucking Square. We didn't need to see that. I didn't need to know that. That little scared voice wasn't so little anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And suddenly it wasn't in my head anymore. It was in my earpiece. Every time some jerk-off couldn't control his mouth, Land Warrior made sure the rest of us heard it. There's too many. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Someone from another platoon, I didn't know his name, started hollering, I hit him in the head and he didn't die. They don't die when you shoot him in the head. I'm sure he must have missed the brain. It can happen around just grazing the inside of the skull. Maybe if he'd been calm and used his own brain, he would have realized that. Panic's even more infectious than the Z germ, and the wonders of Land Warrior allowed that germ to become airborne. What? They don't die? Who said that? You shot it in the head? Holy crap, they're indestructible. All over the net you could hear this, browning shorts across the Info Super Highway. Everyone pipe down, someone shouted. Hold the line, stay off the net. An older voice you could tell, but suddenly it was drowned out in this scream, and suddenly my eyepiece, and I'm sure everyone else's, was filled with the sight of blood spurting into a mouth of broken teeth. The sight was from a dude in the yard of a house behind the line. The owners must have left a few reanimated family members locked in when they bugged out. Maybe the shock from the explosions weakened the door or something, because they came bursting out right into this poor bastard. His gun camera recorded the whole thing, fell right at the perfect angle. There were five of them, a man, a woman, three kids. They had him pinned on his back. The man was on his chest. The kids had him by the arms, trying to bite through his suit. The woman tore his mask off. You could see the terror in his face. I'll never forget his shriek as she bit off his chin and lower lip. They're behind us, someone was shouting. They're coming out of the houses. The line's broken. They're everywhere. Suddenly, the image went dark, cut off from an external source, and the voice, the older voice, was back again. Stay off the net, he ordered, trying real hard to control his voice, and then the link went dead. I'm sure it must have taken more than a few seconds. It had to even if they'd just been hovering above our heads, but it seemed like right after the communications line blacked out that the sky was suddenly screaming with JSFs. I didn't see them release their ordnance. I was at the bottom of my hole cursing the army and God and my own hands for not digging deeper. That ground shook. The sky went dark. Debris was everywhere, earth and ash and burning whatever flying above my head. I felt this weight slam between my shoulder blades, soft and heavy. I rolled over, it was a head and torso, all charred black and still smoking and still trying to bite. I kicked it away and scrambled out of my hole seconds after the last of the J-Sows fell. I found myself staring into this cloud of black smoke, where the horde had been. The freeway, the houses, everything was covered by this midnight cloud. I vaguely remember other guys getting out of their holes, hatches opening on tanks and Bradleys, everyone just staring into the darkness. There was a quiet, a stillness that in my mind, lasted for hours. And then they came, right out of the smoke like a freaking little kid's nightmare. Some were steaming, some were even still burning. Some were walking, some were crawling, some just dragging themselves along on their torn bellies. Maybe one in 20 was still able to move, which left, shit, a couple thousand? And behind them, mixing with their ranks and pushing steadily towards us, the remaining million that the airstrike hadn't even touched. And that's when the line collapsed. I don't remember it all at once. I see these flashes, people running, grunts, reporters. I remember a newsman with a big Yosemite Sam mustache trying to pull a Beretta from his vest before three burning Gs pulled him down. I remember a dude forcing open the door of a news van, jumping in, throwing out a pretty blonde reporter, and trying to drive away before a tank crushed them both. Two news choppers crashed together, showering us with their own steel rain. One Comanche driver, brave, beautiful motherfucker, tried to turn his rotor onto the oncoming G's. The blade diced a path right down their mast before catching on a car and hurling him into the A&P. Shooting, crazy random shooting. I took a round in the sternum in my armor center plate. I felt like I'd run into a wall. 
even though I'd been standing still. It knocked me on my ass. I couldn't breathe. And just then, some dumbass lobbed a flashbang right in front of me. The world was white. My ears were ringing. I froze. Hands were clawing me, grabbing my arms. I kicked and punched. I felt my crotch get warm and wet. I shouted, but I couldn't even hear my own voice. More hands, stronger, were trying to haul me somewhere. Kicking, squirming, cursing, crying. Suddenly a fist clocked me in the jaw. It didn't knock me out, but I was suddenly relaxed. These were my buddies. Zack don't punch. They dragged me into the closest Bradley. My vision cleared just long enough to see the line of light vanish with the closing hatch. Wainio reaches for another cue, then abruptly decides against it. I know professional historians like to talk about how Yonkers represented a catastrophic failure of the modern military apparatus, how it proved the old adage that armies perfect the art of fighting the last war just in time for the next one. Personally, I think that's a big old sack of it. Sure, we were unprepared. Our tools, our training, everything I just talked about, all one class A gold standard clusterfuck. But the weapon that really failed wasn't something that rolled off an assembly line. It's as old as, I don't know, I guess as old as war. It's fear, dude. Just fear. And you don't have to be sun freaking Sue to know that the real fighting isn't about killing or even hurting the other guy. It's about scaring him enough to call it a day. Break their spirit. That's what every successful army goes for, from tribal face paint to the blitzkrieg to, what do we call the first round of Gulf War II? Shock and awe? Perfect name, shock and awe. But what if the enemy can't be shocked and awed? Not just won't, but biologically can't. That's what happened that day outside New York City. That's the failure that almost lost us the whole damn war. The fact that we couldn't shock and awe Zack boomeranged right back in our faces and actually allowed Zack to shock and awe us. They're not afraid. No matter what we do, no matter how many we kill, they will never, ever be afraid. Yonkers was supposed to be the day we restored confidence to the American people. Instead, we practically told them to kiss their ass goodbye. If it weren't for the South African plan, I have no doubt we'd all be slouching and moaning right now. The last thing I remember was the Bradley being tossed like a Hot Wheels car. I don't know where the hit was, but I'm guessing it must have been close. I'm sure had I still been standing out there exposed, I wouldn't be standing here today. Have you ever seen the effects of a thermobaric weapon? Have you ever asked anyone with stars on their shoulders about them? I bet my ball sack you'll never get the full story. You'll hear about the heat and pressure, the fireball that continues expanding, exploding, and literally crushing and burning everything in its path. Heat and pressure, that's what thermobaric means. Sounds nasty enough, right? What you won't hear about is the immediate after effect, the vacuum created when that fireball suddenly contracts. Anyone left alive will either have the air sucked right out of their lungs or and they'll never admit this to anyone, have their lungs ripped right out of their mouth. Obviously, no one's going to live long enough to tell that kind of horror story, probably why the Pentagon's been so good at covering up the truth. But if you ever see a picture of a G, or even an example of a real walking specimen, and he's got both airbags and windpipe just dangling out from his lips, make sure you give him my number. I'm always up for meeting another veteran of Yonkers. <laughs>